Hi everybody, this is Joe. Uh, in advance of what you're about to see, which may put some of you into shock, I included a small recap of last week's video in which I forcefully removed Daryl's answer hat. Luckily, Daryl in his infinite engineering marveling way has come up with a concoction that will never ever allow me to do what I did last week. So without further ado, here's Daryl. So. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully we won't have any technical questions today. What no, do we have? I have a question from Gerald. And he says, I'm getting ready to start acrylic painting under your instruction, but having trouble finding the medium you mentioned. Now, he says, what I bought is Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. It's white and says flow medium on it. Is this what you're asking, or should my flow medium be clear? I bought white. Okay, well, if you'll remember, uh, for those of you who have uh, watched our video preparation for acrylic painting, you'll find there that we show you exactly what mediums we used in that series. And what I've done, Joe, is I've decided to show everybody a few of the uh, acrylic mediums that I have used. Now, let me answer the question on uh, clear or not clear white or what color, it doesn't matter the color. If I'm going to use a clear medium, I want the natural color of the paint to show up on my canvas and then when I'm blending it as well. If I want the color to become a little lighter or more pastel, then I want to have the white in. And then I do not use a medium that uh, people are used to. What I do is use acrylic paint, okay? acrylic. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I got really turned around there. What I, I think use, it's the ribbon. <laughs> I use the uh, white gesso. You know, I think I'm going to get you a propeller hat. <laughs> <laughs> but I use the white gesso, and uh, that helps keep the colors light. It keeps the canvas wet, and, and it's just like if you were using oil painting or you're familiar with oil painting, I use uh, medium with white in it, white paint. However, if you want to use a color like lavender or, you know, it doesn't matter what the color is, then what I will do is take the uh, gesso and put a little bit of that acrylic paint in it, mix it up, and that's what I'm going to use as my medium. And normally that's the base that you use. After you put the base down and get that first layer of paint on, then I tend to go more to the clear uh, acrylic medium. Now there are several different kinds that I use. I find them quite good. This one is by Grumbacher and it's called Slow Blend. And they have two different kinds. One is uh, Slow Blend and one is Clear Blend. Slow Blend seems to have a little more color to it, but the beauty of it is it takes a long time to dry. So it assists in keeping your acrylic paint wet. Another excellent product that I use is from the Martin F. Weber company. In fact, this is a really good product to use. Uh, I like their acrylic paints. I like it, you know, the way they uh, treat people. Uh, Premint, this is clear. It's called a flow medium, and it's designed specifically for acrylic. You see, the reason I use medium over water with acrylics is because water leaves little holes in the paint and I don't like. That's why they often call this an improver because it improves over water and it allows you to have a very consistent and solid coverage of paint. There's another one that I use from uh, Artesian. It does exactly what the uh, uh, Grumbacher and the Martin F. Weber Prima brand does, but again, it's just another one that I consistently like to use. So it's kind of hard for me to uh, give you the exact brand name since I use several of them, but they, those three that I have uh, shown you are excellent ones. So keep on painting with acrylics and let us know how you're doing and if this helps you. And by the way, let me just take a moment and tell everybody else. Uh, that if you have a question, please, by all means, send it to me at daryl at darylcrow.com. And even if you've asked a question that someone else has asked before, we'll send you a gift. So anyone who sends us a, a question, we like to return the favor 
by sending you a gift. And that gift is a nice free lesson. Okay, um, and uh, are we done with the questions? Joe, can I get off this? Uh, no, and I'm just getting used to that questions. ribbon. I really love it. And uh, <laughs> the next question is from Terry Bradshaw, believe it or not. You mean the quarterback for the Steelers? Uh, I don't know, but I'm sure it's been uh, that this person's been uh, put in that category on more than one occasion. I don't know if this is actually Terry Bradshaw, but it is Terry Bradshaw. Hi, Terry. I love you. <laughs> I love football. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to make much ado, but you know where I spend Sundays. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, on another note, hi, Daryl. Watched a few of your videos and found them interesting. I've used watercolor and acrylic in the past. I'm now returning to painting again. I've become very interested in wildlife painting and the thought of placing wildlife in rich, natural-looking landscape. I'm thinking of using oils as the way Bob Ross painted his landscape interests me that wet in wet style. And I noticed that you have a similar approach to landscape painting and wanted to ask you if it is possible to paint wet in wet in that Bob Ross style just using normal oil paints, as you seem to be doing just this. Also, is it okay to use MDF that's been primed with gesso as I can't afford to buy canvas? Okay, well, I'm not sure I know what uh, MF, MDF. MDF is, but let me give you a general uh, answer on what you can do that will uh, uh, help you out with the types of material. Now, in the art world, what you paint on is called a structure, and so that's about as technical as I get in life here. Uh, but first off, let me uh, make a general comment about painting uh, wildlife in a wet-on-wet -wet style and wet-on-wet -wet landscaping. What I like to do, I love painting wildlife with, uh, uh, with oils. And in fact, I produced an entire series of DVDs called The Basic Techniques of Oil Painting Wildlife. And in there, you see that we use uh, the wet-on-wet -wet or the wet-in-wet -wet process of painting. Now... You combine that with the ability to do landscape, such as we have in our basic techniques and, and as we've shown here uh, in many of our uh, demo and sample uh, videos, you can bring the two together easily. Now, there are certain things you can deploy to make it easier. For example, one of the things I like to do is make a cutout of the animal that I'm going to paint and put it right on the bare canvas and smooth it out and I use sticky contact paper to do that. Now what that allows me to do is to go ahead and paint the entire landscape without worrying about the animal. And then you've got a choice. You can pull that uh, sticky off afterward and then start to paint the wildlife animal or you can let it dry, pull the sticky off and then go ahead and paint the, uh, the animal. And I believe we showed that a couple of times on how to do it. The other part of your question, Terry, is what about structures? How can I use inexpensive structures to paint? And the answer is the same way that you painted the original. But you have to be careful on the medium if you're laying down the medium first, which is something I like to do. Certain papers will absorb it and they will end up as a uh, as drying instantly and so it's like you didn't put the medium on to begin with some papers become too soggy and they're not usable anymore so in both of those cases you're better off taking the medium and mixing it into the paint when you do your basic uh, uh, initial lay down and uh, and then once the lower paint levels are wet then it's just the traditional paint wet into wet uh, process that you go through. Um, if you're looking for real, real inexpensive uh, uh, structures to paint on, besides cave walls, and I got to admit that at least here in the United States, we're starting to run out of uh, spare cave walls. The thing I like to do is to use canvas paper, okay? This is paper that's been made to emulate your traditional canvas. 
and I take and you can get a pad of ten for like a buck something a piece. Uh, but I like to tear off one of those, and they come in all different sizes. So you can, I think I've seen them as high as 16 by 20 or even 18 by 24. But you rip off one of those sheets, and then I'll mask tape it or thumbtack it to an existing canvas. And that way I also have the feel of the canvas with my brush. So I get used to painting on canvas, but I'm really only painting at the price of paper. That's been my preference. There's also what they call canvas boards, and that surface is harder. And if that doesn't bother you, then that's also an excellent uh, method of uh, painting inexpensively. But when you use that particular structure, be prepared for a very, very long time in drying because the backs of the canvas board are not porous. They're solid paper and so they take a while to dry. What I would find would dry in a week with the uh, uh, traditional canvas will take me two or three months on the uh, uh, boards themselves. But on the paper, they dry very quickly. Uh, okay, Joe, do, what's the next question? Well, the next one's a technical, so I'm going to need to get that hat off your head uh, to answer these questions, Daryl. So, uh, let's no, no. No, no, you can't have it. You got to have it. You know what? He's so breaking my heart today. I'm going to have to try it without the hat. Just for today. Three questions. All right. What are the three questions? What is a zip file and why do we use it? Oh, well, I know that. Uh, you... Excuse me. Let's try this. What is a zip file? The reason we zip or compress our files is because they are so large that it makes it a lot simpler to download them. And uh, the thing is you cannot download the zip file and click on it and play it, which is another question that we have. The reason for that is it's zipped. So I, we've got several utilities out there. A lot of the new versions of Windows have unzip, uh, built-in unzip programs. But there's free ones out there. One is called 7-Zip. You go to www.7-Zip.com. Is that, that the number 7 or the spell 7? Number 7. No, number 7. It's not spelled out. It's the number 7. And I actually put a link on our download page that we gave for a free gift uh, for Christmas because we've had a lot of questions about that. And the thing is, why do we use confirmation emails? Well, Several reasons, but I'll break down the two major ones. The major ones is we have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bots, what they call go bots out there, robots out there, that go out and track pages, get into your files. We want to make sure that the people that are downloading them, because of the of amount of bandwidth used, we're trying to ensure that they're going to legitimate people like yourselves. We know that you wouldn't do anything wrong, but there are a lot of unscrupulous people out there to do uh, the third one is how come downloads take so long? That's the age-old question. And that's one of the main reasons, by the way, that we've set up our You Can Paint Club with strictly streaming videos. This way here, you don't have that issue. As a matter of fact, if you guys go uh, YouTube, if you'll notice, it first used to have very short videos. Now they've got a lot longer ones. However, they don't figure anybody is going to go till the end of those. Everybody watches two or three minutes. Our videos are two hours on an average. They're huge files. They're about 1.5 to 2 gigabytes in size, which take a lot of time to download, depending on your internet connection. So you have a couple of options. We have over 200 uh, on our You Can Paint Club, which we stream to everybody flawlessly. The downloads do take a while. However, when they're free like this, take advantage of them. Just be patient and you won't have any issues. And remember, to play them, you have to unzip them. And then that will become, it'll have an extension of MP4, which is a media playing format. And that answers the technical questions. I'll now turn you back over to the ribbonless Daryl Crow. What is wrong with me this morning? <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed these questions. I certainly have enjoyed the questions and the answer, in spite of the fact that Joe is after my hat. In spite of that fact. Now, I want everybody here who has been watching this to let us know what you think of these. And let me know who should be wearing the hat. 
Joe or Dale. Now, I know which one I want you to vote for. His name does not have just three letters in it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great new year. Download today, um, download today or tomorrow our brand new lesson that we put up there for everyone, which is the uh, Christmas poinsettia. Hope you enjoy it. I'm Daryl Crow, and yes, if you send me a question, I'll send you yet even another gift.